Hi everyone, this is Pre Algebra Lesson 7 9. Analyze linear equations y equals mx plus b. This is the last lesson of the topic. We'll be able to derive the equation y equals mx plus b um, in this lesson. And this is the basic set of um, linear equations. So let's look at explore it, explain it. Sue and John take the tram from the base camp to the mountain summit. After about six and a half minutes in the tram, John says, cool, we're a mile above sea level. She says, we passed the one mile mark a couple of minutes ago. Hmm, okay. So you can see in the graph that the summit elevation, so at top of this mountain is 9,600 feet. And then the mountain lodge elevation, so on the bottom of the mountain, that's 2,080 feet. Mountain tram is 800 vertical feet per minute. That's the speed of the mountain tram, okay? They are taking the tram. So first, construct an argument to defend Shu's statement. Shu says, we passed the one mile mark a couple of minutes ago. So how could that be true, okay? Um, and what, what is John thinking, right? So they both think, okay, um, they're, they're at least a mile away, right? But they both know they started at 2,080 feet above sea level at zero minutes. So that's when they started the tram. And then they're gonna, they're gonna add 80 feet per minute until you get 5,000 and 5,280 feet. That means they took it, they, it took four minutes to reach 5,180 feet, not six and a half minutes, right? Um, why, are we, why are we getting 5,280 feet? 5,280 feet, first of all, is one mile. So these are in feet. So you need to know how many feet go into a mile. 5,280 feet goes into a mile. Wait, I don't wanna box it because it's not an answer. I'm gonna highlight it. I'm gonna circle it, okay? So using that information, we're gonna defend Shu's statement. Both John and Shu started at 2,080 feet above sea level at zero minutes. Um, if we add 800 feet per minute until we get 5,280 feet, we see that it took them four minutes to reach 5,280 feet, uh, six and a half minutes. So we already passed a mile a few minutes away. So, so they're right now not exactly a mile away, right? A mile mark, um, it's more than that. So part B, what mistake could John have made? Explain. So why do you think John sees, um, John thinks that we're a mile above sea level um, after six and a half minutes? Well, he may have started at a different point. He, he may thought, is a mile away from the summit, not from the start, the lodge elevation. Okay. Um, yeah. 
So John could have assumed that the tram started at an elevation of zero feet because instead of 2080 feet, if we start from zero, that's when we need six and a half minutes to get to 5,280. But that's when that's not when where we started. Okay, zero feet, elevation of zero feet is a sea level. Um, they started way higher than sea level. Okay. Um, yeah, so he probably assumed that he started from zero feet instead, instead of the actual starting point, which was the base camp. Um, at 2,080 feet above sea level. Okay. There. So focus on math practices on the bottom. Can you use the equation y equals mx to represent the path of the tram? Is there a proportional relationship between x and y explain? Do you think x and y have a proportional relationship? First of all, what's x? x is the, the time in minutes, right? How many minutes you go, y is the distance, the, the elevation, right? So, do we have a proportion relationship for the tram? Yeah, because the tram goes into a steady speed. It goes up um, at the same speed. It's not like, oh, it's gonna get faster and then it's gonna slow down. It's a tram, so it, it goes at the same speed, um, which is 800 vertical feet per minute, right? That's the speed. So they do have a proportion relationship and you, that means, yes, you can use the equation y equals mx to represent the path, right? Um, but in order to be completely a proportional relationship, what else do you need instead of a steady graph and a slope, a constant slope? There's one more thing you need from a proportional relationship. First of all, you need a constant slope. Okay. And then second of all, you need to go through, start at the origin. Does it start at the origin? Does it start from zero elevation? No. So they do have a, a constant of proportionality between X and Y. They do have a relationship, but it's not completely a proportional relationship because it doesn't start at the origin, okay? So uh, X and Y, I'm not gonna capitalize. X and Y have a relationship with a constant of proportionality, but it is not a proportional, proportional relationship because the, the line does not pass through the origin. So that's the most accurate answer, okay? So a line means, uh, if they have a constant slope, that means, yes, they do have a linear equation. It's gonna be a line when you graph it. But if they don't start at the origin, they don't have a proportion relationship, okay? So that is the definition of proportion relationship. Please keep that in mind, okay? So keeping that in mind, let's move on to the lesson. Essential question for this lesson is what is the equation of a line for a non-proportional relationship? Okay, what if it doesn't always start from the origin? 
What if it starts at a different point, at a different y-intercept? We looked at y-intercept last lesson, right? How can we write equations with a different y-intercept um, than origin, right? So example one, write the equation of a line. The middle school student council is organizing a dance and has 500 to pay for a DJ. DJ Dave will charge $200 for a setup fee and the first hour or 425 for a setup fee and four, and four hours. Okay, how can the student council determine whether they can afford to have DJ Dave play for five hours? So his setup fee is gonna be 125 plus every hour, he's gonna charge 75. So 125 plus 75 X is the expression we can use, right? Um, and they have 500 to pay. Wait, why does it say 200 here? For a set of fee in the first, in the first hour. Oh, okay. So, 200 for the set for a set of fee in the first hour or 425 for a set of fee in four hours. So that means they their initial set of fee is 125. The first hour you add 75 and get 200. Yeah. So if you yeah, if you just borrow for the first hour. Um, that's gonna be 200. And then if you um, invite, if you have DJ day for four hours, that's gonna be 425. So that means another hour you add 425 plus 75 and that's 500. So they would have exactly enough money to have him for five hours, right? You can also graph this with the points you have. So um, 1 comma 200 is the first hour and the rate. 4 comma 425 is the four hour time um, and the charge, uh, the cost, 425. So plotting those two points, you have a linear relationship, but then you have a setup fee of 125. So you know y intercept is gonna be 125. You, your graph needs to start at 125 um, to set up. Right, um, and then and then it's a linear relationship. So if you once you graph the line on the graph, you should be able to point out any number of hours and say, oh, that's gonna cost about that much, right? So for example, if you want to know how much it costs for two hours, it's gonna be about um, two seventy five. Yeah. And then three hours, it's going to be about 350. And then four hours, 425, right? Yeah. And then you can also write an equation using y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope, your hourly rate, and then times x, the number of hours plus your initial fee, which is which doesn't change. So that's 125, okay? And then you can use the equation to figure out um, whatever cost you have, um, your charge for any hours, okay? So the total cost is 500 and the student council can afford DJ day. So let's look at try it. Write a linear equation in slope intercept form for the graph shown. The slope intercept form is basically y equals mx plus b. This is called the slope intercept form because we have a slope and the y-intercept, okay? So look at the graph here and figure out y-intercept and the slope looking at the graph, okay? Pick some important points. See if you can do it by yourself and come back when you're ready. Okay, are you ready? All right, <clears throat> so where does the y-intercept start? So where does this line start? Where's your y-intercept? Zero comma two, it seems like, right? So your y-intercept of the line is two. 
the slope is you need to count the slope or you can use the slope formula slope is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1 when your point you when you have two points okay the first point is x sub 1 and y sub 1 second point is x sub 2 y sub 2 okay and so you can either use the slow formula using two points or you can count your points on the graph it's always rise over run so you need to count the vertical distance up or down over the horizontal distance left or right okay so vertical risk distance go up three units wait is that three it looks like three squares oh yeah that's four that's three and that's five so one two three go up three units and go right one two three four four units so they're both positive your slope is three over four. So the equation in the slope intercept form is y equals what's your slope? Three over four x plus what's your y intercept? Two. Okay, that's it. That's how you figure out the equation of the line using the graph. Okay, good. Um, convince me, what two values do you need to know to write an equation of a line and how are they used to represent a line? A line? What are the values you need for the slope intercept form? What were the two values that you initially figured out? The, the y intercept and the slope, right? Yeah, the slope m and the y intercept are needed to represent a line line as y equals mx plus b. okay so keep in mind that you need the slope and the y-intercept in order to do that you need to look at the points on the graph Okay, let's look at the let, uh, the next example. Write a linear equation given its graph. If you have a graph, can you write a linear equation? This is an extension of uh, example one. A salt water solution is cooled to negative six degrees Celsius. During an experiment, the mixture is heated at a steady rate. Write an equation to represent the temperature y after x minutes. Okay, so it's cooled to negative six degrees Celsius. And that's where it starts from. Okay, it looks like it looks like you're gonna start from negative six, and then during an experiment, it's heated at a steady rate. So we're looking at from negative six, it's gonna the temperature is gonna rise at a steady rate. That means we have a linear equation, and we have a constant uh, of proportionality. And so we need to figure out the slope. Um, using the graph. So starting from negative six, your slope is rise over run. You can pick this point or you can pick that point, whatever you like, it's gonna be the same. But if you pick this point, you can just count two over one, plus two over plus one. Or if you count, if you're counting um, the point on the x-axis, the x-intercept, um, that's going to be 2, 4, 6 over 3, okay? So 6 over 3 is also 2 over 1. And so either way, um, it's going to make sense. So your slope is 2, your y-intercept is negative 6, and so you already have the information you need to write the equation of the line. In slope intercept form. So slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, plug in your slope, plug in your y intercept, your equation of the line is y equals 2x minus 6. And just remember that if you have a negative y intercept, then you need to subtract it, of course. Um, and if you have a negative slope, then you have a negative, uh, negative constant in front of your variable x. Okay, example three, graph a given linear equation. Graph the equation y equals negative four x plus three. So can you graph it if you have the equation? 
Well, yes. There are multiple ways to graph. But now that you know the slope intercept form, there is an easy way to graph the slope intercept form. First, in your equation, identify uh, the information that you need. This is your slope. So m is negative 4, and that's your slope. 3 is what? Your y-intercept. Y-intercept is 3, which means you have a 0, comma three points, okay? So start from y-intercept. So first step, start from y-intercept. Or let's specify the start. Um, label the y-intercept, okay? On the graph, so that's zero comma three. And then we're gonna count the slope to figure out your next point. So your slope, negative four, is also equal to negative four over one or four over negative one. Either way is fine. It's just gonna go to a different direction, okay? If you do negative four over one, you go down one, two, three, four unit and then go right one unit. And that's gonna be your next point. From here, if you are using positive four over negative one, you go up one, two, three, four unit, then you go left one unit, and that's gonna be your next point, okay? So either way works. This one is going to the right down. This one is going to the left up, okay? So draw the line through the points, and that's gonna be your line. Easy. So third step, plot the next point. And then fourth step, draw the line through the two points. So try number A and B. What is an equation for the line shown? Figure out the equation for part A. And then part B, you're gonna graph the line with equation Y equals one over three X minus five. See if you can do it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? So part A, what do you need in order to write the equation? You need the y-intercept and the slope. Can you figure out the y-intercept and the slope using the graph? Yes, look at the y-intercept here. This is labeled zero comma two. So your y-intercept is two. What about your slope? You need to count your points. What's another good point? Either this one or this one, right? You go down two and over four, or you go down one or over two. So it's gonna be slope is gonna be negative two over four or negative one over two. Don't forget the negative. Okay, if you're going down, it's a negative. Okay. Or if you're counting this one, you're going up to over one, two, three, four. You're going left. So left is gonna be negative. So ne so positive two over negative four is also negative one over two. Okay. So your equation of the line should be y equals your slope, negative one over two, x plus your y-intercept, positive two. Did you get it right? Good job if you did. All right, part B, graph the uh, line with the equation y equals one over three, x minus five. That is your y-intercept. Your y-intercept is negative five because you have a subtraction, right? So you have a negative five. And then your y your um, slope is going to be one over three. So start with your wider set. Look at our steps over here. So first label the wider set, zero comma. So wider set means you have zero comma negative five, right? So zero comma negative five, you start here. And then you're gonna plot the next point using your slope. Go up one. So this is rise over run, right? So go up one unit and run one, two, three. Three units. Up one, one, two, three. Okay, up one, one, two, three. And then 
that's also negative one over negative three. So if you go, if you want to go to the other direction, you need to count backwards. So go down one, go left three. Okay. So negative one means down one and then left three. Okay. One over three is up one, right three. Okay. And then you're going to connect the lines uh, to complete your equation. Okay. All right. So if you draw a line, your points have to be accurate. If you have these two points and then you draw a line like this, oh, those points are not going to be correct. This is obviously different with that one. So this is incorrect. Okay, so you need to have a straight line with the same slope. So it's, it's uh, smart to plot other points to be accurate, okay? All right, that was the last triad and that was our last lesson. Let's summarize our lesson. So the equation of the line that represents a proportional relationship can be written in slope intercept form y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope of the line and y is b is the y-intercept. That was um, lesson nine, analyzing linear equations. Um, if you have any more questions, please feel free to ask Ms. King in class. And that's the end of the topic seven. We learned so much about equations and linear equations, um, y-intercept and slope, um, and this is a very foundational knowledge before we move on to other equations. So um, feel free to explore and practice more as you go. All right, I'll see you in the next topic. Bye.